is up guys y'all already know what time it is it's time for another horror story okay this one has i think three i don't remember i think there's three stories in this video i got all the lights off except for the one right in front of me so y'all can see me and my reactions but i got the house pitch black right now I'm a little scared but that's the whole point like i said love scaring myself apparently i don't know why i just do okay but yeah we're gonna go ahead see how scary this one is hopefully hopefully it'll give us some nightmares you know we want nightmares y'all okay we want them we want them don't say no yes we do halloween's coming we got to get in the spirit okay but it's enough rambling i'm about to go ahead and play the video go ahead and like and subscribe if you aren't already and share this video with all your friends and family and yes let's go ahead and get right to it this happened a few weeks ago I was hanging out with my friend Dustin, and we decided to go explore this creepy old abandoned asylum. It was a huge building, about three stories high. We walked past the railroad. We then continued to the old asylum. As we walked to it, I looked up and my heart dropped. From the third story window, I could see someone looking down at me and Justin. I stopped and he asked me what was wrong. I told him to look up in that window on the right. He looked up and saw it too. We continued to stare at it for about a few seconds before whoever or whatever it was moved out of sight. Mm -hmm. We then were deciding if we should still go in. No. We settled it. It was just some person trying to buy drugs or something. Drug deals and teens were always in there sneaking. We went past no trespassing signs and explored the first level of the building. Leave. There was a lot of broken glass and graffiti everywhere. There was this one that said, I love it when they run. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, that was kind of creepy, but obviously done as a joke. So we made it no. up to the second floor, and basically the same thing there, except for an old elevator shaft that was cracked slightly open. Dustin mm -hmm. turned his flashlight on and put it in the elevator. We saw a whole lot of electrical junk, some dead birds and animals. If that wasn't freaky enough, we also heard something walking above us on the third story. My heart felt like it was about to explode. I had a bad feeling about this. And I told him we should leave. Yeah. He said, nah, it'll be fine. And he started walking up to the third story. I didn't want to be <laughs> left alone near the spooky elevator, so I followed behind him. No. We had our phones out, taking pictures of all kinds of stuff on the previous floors. As we walked up the stairs, I swear we were being followed, and I told Dustin to hurry up. He went upstairs, and I wasn't far behind. What I saw on the third floor of that asylum will haunt me for the rest of my life. What there happened? were pentagrams and animals all over the place. It smelled awful up there. There were some rooms in the back of the corner. Keep in mind, this is the floor we saw that thing looking down at us from. We heard what sounded like whispers coming from the middle room. We got our phones out and started taking pictures of it. After I got about two or three pics, I saw a figure step out of the room. Mm -mm. My heart was beating so hard I swear it had come through my still chest. There? It was the same person that was looking from the window. He ain't got no eyes. Me and Dustin were freaking out, but we didn't dare move. About 10 seconds of staring, <sighs> and it started sprinting at us screaming. I took off in a sprint down the stairs, almost dropping my phone. I ran and jumped out of the two story window and landed in some <laughs> brush. I got up and ran some more before crouching behind some old shit. Then it hit me. Dustin was still in there. I hadn't even noticed him when I ran down the stairs. I texted him and asked him where he was, but didn't reply. Uh -uh. I sat crouched behind that shed for about three minutes before I saw Justin sprinting out of that house. Oh, I jumped okay. from behind the shed and called his name. He saw me and screamed, run. He looked behind him. Then I looked behind him. He was being chased by two people. I took off down the road, heading for the railroad. Dustin caught up with me, and we didn't stop until we made it to the tracks. We jumped in a ditch beside the railroad and looked up to see the two people standing at the door of the asylum. They were watching us, but then turned and walked back inside. We ran up to the local burger place and sat down at a booth. Out of breath, we ordered some Sprite and fries. While waiting for food, I asked him what happened after food. I ran. 
He said the guy chased him and he ran down the stairs and saw me jump out of the window and he ran to the elevator where he found a small space behind some boxes to hide behind. He said after he sat there for a bit, the guy came down the stairs with another person. They were watching to see where we went. Then his phone went off because I texted him. He said they looked his direction and saw him. They then chased him down the stairs and out the door. And that's when I saw him and we ran. We didn't call the cops because we didn't want to get in trouble for trespassing. I don't know those guys, and I don't know what they were doing in that building, but needless to say, I don't think me or Dustin will ever go back there again. Who's that upstairs? I'm 33 and I have a son named Jeffrey. He's eight years old. Recently, I was able to save enough money to buy Jeffrey a PS4 for his birthday. Three days before Jeffrey's birthday, I went on Amazon and bought a PS4 bundle that came with FIFA 20, Last of Us, God of War, Madden, and Fortnite. I ordered it so it would be delivered on Jeffrey's birthday to surprise him. On the morning of Jeffrey's birthday, I looked outside and saw an Amazon delivery van pull up to my house. Once he knocked at the door, I told Jeffrey to answer the door, as it was a surprise for him. This was something I regret. Because once the door opened, a man stood there holding His the eyes. PS4. And the way he looked at Jeffrey didn't sit right with me. He just stood there with a really weird smile staring at my son with wide eyes. I could tell Jeffrey was feeling uncomfortable as he looked up at me in an unsettling and confused way. I thought the man would just hand us the PS4 and leave. But the way he was staring at my son, I had to step in. I signed for it and I said thank you. The man just said bye. But he wouldn't look at me. He kept his eyes on my son who was now behind me. My son and I were both a little put off by that man, but Jeffrey was happy with his new PlayStation and went to set it up in his room. The following Monday, I picked Jeffrey up from school and asked him how his day was. He told me the usual stuff he always says, what he learned, what lessons he had. But one of the things he said scared me. He told me during one of his breaks when they had recess, it was a man he had got his attention through a fence that was hidden by some bushes in the field where the children spend their break times. I asked Jeffrey what the man said to him. He told me the man was being friendly, asking him where his friends were, when the school let out, and even if he wanted to go to his house afterwards. I asked if he knew this man, and if he had seen him before. He said, yeah. It was the man who delivered his PlayStation on his birthday. And not only that, he saw the man walking around outside watching our house from across the street. I asked Jeffrey when the man was outside our house. He told me in the evening over the weekend. Oh he would look outside his bedroom window and see the man standing there across the street waving at him, smiling. I straight away called the school and warned him about the man hanging around the school. I also told the delivery service and the police. I told them what my son had told me. The next two days, I kept Jeffrey home from school. I was so paranoid and worried I didn't want to let him out of my sight. Yeah, the following Wednesday night, I woke up a little past midnight. I hadn't been sleeping well. I went to check on Jeffrey and then went downstairs to pour myself a glass of water. I then jumped out of my skin when I saw a black figure outside the back door and saw that the figure had tried the back door handle, but it was locked. I looked out the window trying to see who it was, but there was no one there. Then across the road, I saw a car started and took off down the street. I called the police telling them someone had tried to enter my house. I got no sleep that night and I'm still having trouble sleeping. This all took place about two weeks ago and we haven't had any incidents since, but I'm still paranoid and frightened that this isn't over. Oh my God, I order from Amazon all the time. When I was a kid, I used to ride my bike almost daily to the local library branch a few blocks from my home. One day when I was about eight, I rode down to the library like I normally did parked my bike by the bike rack near the back entrance to the building, went in and browsed for whatever an eight-year-old boy would read, mm -hmm. checked out a few books, and left the library. It's a little short. When I came out, there was a man standing over by the bike rack. I didn't think anything of it, so I just went over to get my bike so I could go home. As I went to get on my bike, he said, Hi, my name is John. Then he asked me, What's your name? Mm -mm. I was a stupid kid, so I no, told him. Don't. 
And then he said, I work with your mom, you know. What is her name again? So again, stupid kid, I told him. And then he said, Well, she wanted me to show you something over there behind those trees. Mm-mm. In hindsight, and upon many years of reflection upon this incident, the guy sounds like the most inept kidnapper in history. Yes, it's like he, he was reading from the script of how not to abduct a child. However, it was 35 years ago, and the most education mm-hmm. kids got about this kind of thing was just don't talk to strangers. My parents were great, but this was just not something people worried about all that much back then. I was a bit creeped out when he said that my mom wanted him to show me something in the trees, and my radar for this is weird went up. I politely declined the invitation to the woods and hopped on my bike to pedal home. As I turned away, he grabbed the bar on the rear of my seat to keep me from pedaling away. Now I was scared. I jumped off the back and re-entered the library. I made my way to the circulation desk and asked if I could use the phone. The woman at the desk told me that the phone was not for public use, so I left the library again from the back entrance. The front was always locked. Happily, my bike was still there, and the creepy man was gone. (laughs) Thinking nothing of it, I jumped on my bike and set off. About a block from the library, I noticed a brown car at a stop sign on a side street. I looked again, and I saw the creep behind the wheel. I realized many years later, and not at this time, that he knew my route home, Mm. which means he must have followed me from my house to the library. Whenever I think of this now, it gives me a sick feeling knowing that he could have taken me any time he wanted on my way to the library. I was probably saved by something as random as someone walking a dog or grabbing their mail, and he didn't want any witnesses. Mm -hmm. I pedaled faster once I spotted him, and he pulled out onto the main road. I was on the sidewalk, and he was following me closely. When my bike sped up, he sped up, all the while screaming and pointing at me. Mm -mm. By now, I was screaming too, and moving pretty quickly for an eight-year-old on a five-speed carrying library books. And no, I never thought to drop the books. (laughs) I quickly turned onto a side street, and he was moving too fast to make the turn as well, and I saw him turn onto the next side street. The side street I turned on led to my street, but there was a hill that I could not pedal up between my street and I. I got about midway up the hill when I had to get off and walk my bike up. He was parked at the very top of the hill, just staring at me. I literally walked right past him, and I will never forget his stare or the hate in his eyes. I have no idea why he let me walk past him, why he didn't grab me, why he didn't kill me. Mm. I got to the top of the hill, got back on my bike and pumped my legs to get home. At this point, my house was less than 500 feet away. He turned his car around and followed me again. I got to my house, dropped my bike and screamed for my grandmother. Mm because she was the one home watching me while my parents were at work. The creep sped past my house and turned down a side street. I never saw him again. My parents called the police when they got home. I remember that the creep drove a Plymouth Duster type car and he was balding and was about 25 or 30 years old. I don't know if he was ever caught or if he ever hurt any children, his name or anything. All I know is that I have never gone back to that library. It sounds silly, but it's true. And for the next few years, I walked and rode my bike constantly, looking over my shoulder. And now, I am unbelievably protective over my children. Mm -hmm. I don't trust anyone easily. I don't trust anyone with my children. And my first reaction to a helpful teacher or coach is what is his or her motive or true intention. Not a day goes by that I don't think about that day, and I wonder not, why me, but instead, why not me? Wow. Well, those were pretty creepy, not gonna lie. I think the first one was the scariest, but 
Yeah, they all have some some creepiness to them. Mostly weird people involved, like stalkerish type, child kidnapping. You know, luckily the last two stories, nothing happened to either of those children, but definitely something that's very realistic. So that makes it extremely, extremely creepy to think about. Be careful with your children, please. Don't be having them going to school by themselves and walking around by themselves. Like, make sure you know where they are at all times because there are a lot of weirdos out there. But the first one, they kind of asked for it. Like, you saw the guy upstairs before y'all went in and they still decided to go into that building. So, I don't know what to tell them. Like, what were they thinking? What did they think was going to happen? I really think that they were doing some kind of like seance or I don't know, some ritual or practicing because they were using animals. But since those two, you know, showed up, I think they were going to try to, you know, step it up. And they're like, you know what? Since they trespassing, we might as well, you know, test them out. They're right here. Why not? You know, easy targets. They walked right into it. That's what I think that was going to happen. Luckily, they got away. You know, one of them jumped out of the window. He left his homie, though. <laughs> I'm like, where are your friend at? But he made it out, too. So they got extremely lucky. They really did. But, yeah, the last two were very, 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 very creepy and horrible to think about the fact that that stuff happens. Especially since I do order from Amazon quite often. I always do the no contact though. They just leave it on the front porch and go. I don't want them bringing it to me or anything, handing it to me because people are weird. I don't want to interact whatsoever. But that is all for this video. Please comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also leave a like. And I will see y'all in the next one.